Bojo. Welcome to Wasa Distance Education Center's radio Zoom classes. This is MEL3E, Grade 11 Workplace Math, and I'm Bronwyn Slate. I'd like to participate live today, you can call the Wasa Studio at 1-800-465-7144 or 737-4017. You can listen on the radio at 91.9 FM and on the television at Bell Express U Channel 972. You're always welcome to join me live through the Zoom link which is available for me and also your DEC. Our classes are scheduled Monday through Thursday from nine till 10 in the morning. And we are now in our ninth and final week of our nine week course. For what work to submit, the support questions along with the pencil icons are not for marking, they are practice problems. So do them, but don't submit them. The key questions, however, with the key icon are the ones to submit for marking. So please do all of them, showing all of your work, your steps and your thinking. This way I can give you credit for all of your understanding, opposed to not being able to give you any credit for your understanding if I don't, if you only give me an answer and it's wrong. There are three methods for submitting your work. The first is to scan your work in and send electronically. Using a smart device, you can scan either with the iPhone Notes app or the Android Google Drive app. And then you can send it through email to studentwork at nnec.on.ca and cc it to bronwyn.slate at nnec.on.ca. Or you can also send it to me through Facebook Messenger at bslatewasa. And the second method is to drop our work, your work off into Lookout. We have an outdoor mailbox at our location 74 Front Street. We're in the bright red building next to the post office. And we have a small white mailbox next to our side entrance. Your method is to hand your work into your DEC. Then your DEC can send your work through the express or fax it to 807-737-1732 or toll free fax to 1-800-463-7852. If you'd like to connect with me through social media, both my Facebook and my YouTube channel are under the name B Slate Wasa. So you can connect with me there and all of our videos and classes are recorded and then uploaded to YouTube. Uh, generally, I will this week I will get them up the same day. Um, there are short videos on my YouTube channel explaining common errors or confusing concepts. So that can be a good place if you're struggling with something to check out first to see if I address those, whatever you're struggling with. It's a really visual subject, so I strongly encourage you to access the video as opposed to just listening on the radio. You can join me live through Zoom, even if you don't want to talk to me, that's fine. Or you can, as I said, access all of the recordings on YouTube. If neither of those options work for you, let me know and I can send you a recording of all the videos and that will set you up for the most success. However, I'm not sure if that will happen. That might be challenging to happen before your deadline of June 10th this week. So always, if you have any questions or concerns, please reach out and contact me. I have been in contact with many students, but some of you I can't get a hold of. So feel free to reach out to me if I can't get a hold of you. My email again is bronwyn.slate at nnec.on.ca. My Facebook is B Slate Wasa. The phone number is 807-737-1488, extension 2209, or toll free 1-800-667-3703. Again, your last day to submit work this, to be marked for this term is Friday, this Friday, June 10th. All right, so we are in our review week. We will be reviewing, each day we'll be reviewing one unit. Um, so today we are reviewing unit one. But first, let's activate our brain, as always. We know I don't like math, mad math minutes or math mad minutes. They're not great for building skills. So we develop strategies that we can use in various situations. Our question today is 17 plus 24. And we're using the method of compensation. So what that means is I'm going to adjust my numbers to make one friendly um, to help do the problem. So how I look at 17 and I say, I don't like 17, seven is not a friendly number for me. So I'm gonna add three to 17 to get that to 20 because 20 is a much friendlier number. So if I add three to one side, I'm gonna take away three from the other number to compensate for the fact that I added it there. So 24 take away three is 21. So 21 plus 20 is equal to 41. So because I've just sort of shifted my numbers from one place to the other place, it's the same amount. So 17 plus 24 is also 
41. All right, so quick overview of what the final assessment is going to look like. So it's not an exam, it's a culminating assignment. So that means that it covers all 20 of the lessons, but it is open book. So you have access to your assessments, to your, the YouTube videos, to your IELTS booklet, to the Desmo calculators, um, to also to Google Maps. All of this is fine to have access to. Um, it's okay to use all of these resources. It's not timed, but it will have a deadline. This Friday would be the deadline for it as uh, we are right up until the end. So it needs to be in by the end of this week. Um, and the structure will be likely a bit unfamiliar. Um, it's not just answering questions. It's a little bit more like your later assignments um, that we're planning a trip. Um, it, it's because it's connecting all of the learning that we've done and putting it all together. You need to give yourself some time to do it. All right, so let's first dive into lesson one, earning an income. So first we looked at salary, which is your pay based on a yearly amount for a set number of days and hours. Um, there are fixed payments paid at regular intervals and they often are monthly, which is once a month, so 12 times a year, semi-monthly, which is twice a month or 24 times a year, weekly, which is every week or 52 times a year, and bi-weekly, which is every second week or 26 times a year. Bi-weekly is what's been most common in my life, is that it's every second week. Then we talked about piecework, um, which was part, the second part of the lesson one. So piecework is when your income is based on the number of items or produced or sold. So earnings can sometimes include a combination of a salary and piecework. So you control how much you get paid based on how much you accomplish. But if you can't work or work fast enough, you won't make a lot of money. So that's something to realize with piecework. All right, so we're going to be doing the supplementary questions. We don't have time to do all of them. I've picked and ch chose a few um, to sort of give an overview as we review. Um, so that's how we will, what we'll be doing throughout the practice today. So support question number one, which is on page four of your aisle booklet. Calculate the monthly, semi-monthly, weekly, and bi-weekly pay for each of the annual salaries given. So we're just gonna do one of these because this process is exactly the same. So let's let's just do A. Um, so the annual salary is $20,000. So that's $20,000 a year. So the monthly pay is $20,000. And how many months are in the new year? 12. So $20,000 divided by 12. So going to our calculator, $20,000 divided by 12 is equal to $1,666.67. So that's what your monthly gross pay would be. Semi-monthly is twice a year, sorry, twice a month. So you still do $2,000, $20,000, my bad, divided by 24. It is best to just always go back to your original amount. Yes, we could just divide our monthly pay by two, but it is better to go back and do the original amount. So that is $833.33. The reason why is because weekly is not an even distribution of monthly or semi-monthly. So if you sometimes go back to the original amount and sometimes don't, that could be confusing. So there are 52 weeks in a year. So we're gonna divide 20,000 by 52. So that's $384.62, 384 dollars And biweekly is 20,000 divided by 26. Which is $769.23. So this is all the same amount that you would get paid yearly if you were added up, but it's just broken up into different amounts depending on how often you get paid. So it's technically the same amount of money, this looks different because it's how frequently you get paid. 
the more frequently you get paid, the less money you get each time. The less frequently you get paid, the more money you get paid each time. All right, so then let's continue. So let's calculate the annual salary. So this is we're going back the opposite direction. So if we are, I might not do the actual math, but I'm going to set it up for each of these. So if it's $500 weekly, that means, excuse me, excuse me, sorry. All right, we're doing 500 weekly, so 500 times 52 would get us our yearly salary. If we're doing monthly, we have $2,040 monthly times it by 12 would get us our annual salary. On 1,200 semi-monthly, so 1,200 times 24, because there's 24 semi-monthly payments in a year, would give us our annual amount. And $692.50 bi-weekly would be $692.50 times 26, because it is bi-weekly. There's 26 bi-weekly payments in a year. So then you would just calculate those using a calculator, which we're not going to do just to save time. We have lots to cover. All right, so the number three, David works at a hockey rink selling programs. He is paid $12 per night and 25 cents per program sold. He sells 121 programs in three nights. How much did he earn working at the rink? So we have two parts. We have our night per night amount and we have our per program amount. So per night, we have 12 per night times three. And for program, we have 25 cents times 121. And then we're just gonna add those two amounts together. I'll we'll figure out how much we have in total. So 12 times three is 36. And 25 cents times 121 is $30.25. So $30.25. Five cents plus 36 is $66 and 25 cents. So David earned $66 and 25 cents working at the rink. And then number four, Owen earns $78 and 75 cents building packing boxes for a moving company. He built 225 packing boxes. How much did he earn per box? So that means that we're figuring out, so we want earn per box, that means we want money per box. So we're gonna do 700 and, sorry, $78.75 divided by 225 because it's money per box. So that's how we know which order to divide in. So $78.75 divided by 225 is equal to 35 cents. So Owen earned 35 cents per box. And that's how we figure that out. So that is was lesson, a quick overview of lesson one. We got to go through it fast because we only have about 10 minutes per lesson. All right, so lesson two, commission and hourly rates. So an hourly rate is when a Employer is employee, sorry, is paid based on a fixed income per hour, regardless of the amount of work done or assigned. So you always just get paid a certain amount for the time that you spend. In Ontario, we now have a general minimum wage that is $15 per hour. That is going up after September 30th of this year, but right now it's $15 per hour for adults. For students, it is $14.10 per hour. And then there's a couple other more specific ones, but those are sort of the general most common um, ones to be concerned about. So then we have overtime. Overtime is the hourly rate. Um, given when people work beyond their daily the regular daily or weekly hours given. So if you work more than what you were scheduled for, then you get paid time and a half. Um, so time and a half is generally what overtime is. It could be more, but generally time and a half is what it 
the standard is, um, that means that it's 1.5 times the regular rate of you that you use. And you might, it might be slightly different for your employer. They may offer it to you earlier than that, but it applies to all work above and beyond 44 hours a week. So that is the standard in terms of provincial leave for Ontario. If you work more than 44 hours a week, you have to get paid at least time. Could get paid time and a half before 44 hours a week, but at 44 hours a week, you have to get paid time and a half. At least. And then we have commission where your earnings are based on how much you sell. So we have straight commission, which is just your earnings are 100% of commission. Then you have graduated commission, which is part salary, part commission. The rate really varies by industry. So the employer, the position, the experience, it really, there's not a set. Um, there's not a minimum defined amount that it has to be. It's usually between 5% up to, could be 50% of the commission of the sales. So it, it really depends on the, on the situation. All right, so support question number two on page 12 of your IL book. So calculate the overtime, regular pay, and total pay for each situation. Assume a regular work week is 40 hours and overtime is time and a half. So they tell us both how many hours are normal hours and then how much our rate is for time and a half, because remember that could be different. So we just make the question gives that to us. So in situation A, you're working 63 hours at $6.50 an hour. Remember the numbers in your booklet are not realistic as in Canada and Ontario, there's no way that you could make $6.50 an hour. That is illegal. So for regular pay, we know that it's 40 hours times $6.50. So let's calculate what that is. So just for a regular work week, you would make $2,260 for the work that you usually do. So then for the overtime, so that's your regular pay. So your overtime pay, I'm just gonna put overtime, OT. So first it is the hours we need to figure out. So how many overtime hours did you work? Well, you worked a total of 63, but 40 of them were normal hours. So 63 take away 40 is 23. So 23 hours is how much you worked overtime. And the rate, we need to figure out how much it is. So normally you get paid um, $6.50, but we need to times that by 1.5 because we're getting paid extra for these extra hours. So time and a half. So if I think about this, so time is gonna be $6.50 and then a half of that. So half of $6 is $3 and half of 50 cents is 25 cents. So we're gonna add an extra $3.25 per hour. So that means that's gonna be $9.75 is the rate for overtime. So then we get paid in this situation for 23 hours times $9.75 is equal to $1,000. Two twenty-four. So that's the extra that you get paid for the extra work. So then the total for that week is your regular. So two hundred and sixty plus the extra, which is two twenty-four twenty-five. So add those together, and we get four hundred and eighty-four dollars and twenty-five cents. So that's the regular. That would be the total pay for that week where you worked sixty-three hours in total. All right, I'm not gonna do another example because it's exactly the same thing, just different numbers. You still have to view on your regular pay, find how many hours you're doing for overtime, the rate for overtime, how much you get paid for overtime, and then add them together. Okay, so number four on page 13. Brianna is a real estate broker who earns four, and a quarter percent commission on the selling price of every house she sells and an annual salary of $50,000. How much did she earn in one month if she sells a house for 
$18,000. So to me, there's two pieces. So we need to figure out the commission and we need to figure out the salary. Because you still get paid, it's an annual salary, but you would still get paid part of that in one month. So the commission is per 0.25, four and a quarter, right? I just converted four and a quarter up here to 4.25, which converted into a decimal. Percent of $318,000. So we're doing 0 0.0425 times $318,000. So that's how much the house sold for. This Brianna gets a percentage of that as her commission for selling it. So she gets thirteen thousand five hundred and fifteen dollars. Thirteen five fifteen for selling just that house. So then the salary is $50,000 per year, but we're looking for how much does she get in one month. So we divide it by 12. So 50,000, I divide 12 is $4,166.67. So then the total for one month is the team to add together. So 13,515 plus $4,166.67, which is So that's how she would make this month. Because it's commission, we can't guarantee that that's going to be how much she makes every month because it depends on how much she sells per month. And that could be, it's going to be really different. Sometimes it might be really great. Sometimes it might not be so good at all. So that's just for this particular month. So then another example, we have Noah is a car salesperson who earns a commission of 6% on all his car sales up to $100,000 and 7% on sales over $100,000. One month, Noah sold $122,000, $122,345, sorry, worth of cars. How much was his earning for that month? So we don't have any annual salary, so we don't have to continue that, but we have under $100,000 and over $100,000. So for under 100,000, that is just $100,000, right? Because that's, you know how much that is, times 6%. So times 6%. So $100,000 times 6%, which is 0 0.06, which is $6,000, okay? So then over $100,000 for this part, we have to figure out how much that is. So we know total it's 122,345. And we have to take away the $100,000 that we already earned 6% commission on. So we don't get to earn 7% commission on that as well. So that's 22,345. So then we do 23,345 times 7%. So we just earn that extra percent on that part that is over that amount. So this is a incentive to sell more is the idea behind it. Sorry, just trying to move so I can make sure that I get my right number. 22,345 times 0. Point, sorry, times 0 0.07. So that is $1,564.15. 156415. So then total for the month, ah, 
sorry. So monthly total is equal to 6,000 plus $1,564.15. So that's $7,564.15. So that's how commission can work, either if you have a salary to include or if it's different depending on how much you sell. So that's really important to be paying attention to. All right, next lesson, lesson number three, gross and net pay. So for gross income, this is the total income earned by an individual. So your paycheck will always state your gross income, but that isn't how much money you will actually get. We've been talking about gross income so far, just in terms of how much money you make, but not how much money you take home. So net income is the total income an individual actually takes home. So this is your gross income, take away your deductions, which is equal to your net income, or often people call it your take home pay. So then what are the deductions? So these are the what your employer takes off your earnings to pay for various services and social protection plans. So your employer does this on your behalf. So you are paying into these services, but your employer automatically does that so that everybody does it to a certain degree. Like it depends upon the percentage depends upon your income. So every employer employee must pay in Canada must pay pay income tax, Canada pension plan, and employee insurance, employment insurance. So income tax, we'll talk about more later. Canadian pension plan is so that when you retire, you have you get a pension, you get some sort of amount of money back so that you can survive. And employment insurance is in case you lose your job through no fault of your own, that you can then apply for employment insurance and you get paid a certain amount um, so that again, you can survive. Some workplaces also have other extra deductions. So it could be a company pension plan. It could be life, health, mental insurance, like your benefits, could be union dues. There could be other things. Um, and that will all show up on your pay stub. So in lesson three, they just give you some deductions and then you just have to calculate that based on that, you don't have to figure out how much your deductions are. So for number one on page 19, um, so they're just, if you have, if you know your gross pay, $261 and 20, sorry, 23 cents, take away $444 and 57 cents. Sorry, brain isn't really working. I'm not gonna actually do the calculation, but that's just setting it up. If we know our net pay and we know our deductions, then we can figure our gross pay by adding them together. So we do 419, which is our net pay, and 83 cents plus $71.45. And that's gonna tell us our gross pay. If we know our gross pay and our net pay, we can figure our deductions because we'll do our gross pay, take away our net pay, and that tells us what our deductions are. And again, for Evelyn, we know our net pay. We can add it to our deductions to figure out our gross pay. Okay, so let's look at a little bit more of a different example. So number three, Kristen earns 528, sorry, $520.84 weekly working at a travel agency. The deductions from her weekly pay are EI, $29.36, CPP, $18.85, income tax, $109.27, health plan, $3.56, life insurance, 59 cents, RESP contribution, $12.50, you need to do $2.25. So first determine Kristen's gross weekly pay. So that is, you know what a gross weekly pay is. That is $520.84. They just give it to us. We don't have to do any calculations. Thought we were going to, but they wanted a gross weekly pay. We we're told how much she earns weekly. What is her total weekly deductions? So now we need to add together all of these deductions in order to figure out how many, what our total deductions are. So I'm not going to write it all out. I'm just going to uh, calculate it on my calculator to save time. So we just really are adding up all the deductions that I just read out. So those are gonna be her total weekly deductions. This happens every single week that on her pay, 
this amount of money is taken off to contribute to these various different places in order to set herself up for success if anything goes wrong and the work isn't done or something. Um, so that is a total of $176.85, $176.85. You should show me your work, but I am not just for the sake of um, time. So your net weekly pay is going to be your gross pay, $520.84. Take away your weekly deductions, $176.85. You need to give yourself enough time to be able to show all your work. I can't do that because I'm limited by what we have on the radio and so our gross time, sorry, our gross pay, take away our deductions is $343.99. That's her gross weekly or her net weekly pay. So then D net monthly pay here. I want to multiply this by four because I'm like, there's four weeks in a month, but there are not exactly four weeks in a month. So to find your monthly pay from your weekly pay, you need to take your net income, weekly income, and times it by 52, and then divide it by 12. So that's in order to go from weekly to monthly, you have to do both steps in order to get an accurate answer. So we times it by 52 to figure out how much we get in a year, and then we divide everything by 12, to figure out how much we would get in a month. So 104, sorry, $1,490.62 is how much you get per month. If you just multiply $343.99, you are not gonna get the same answer. Okay, so then we have number four. Kristen also has the following monthly memberships. So she has rent, gym membership, so rent for $8.50, gym membership for $35, groceries for $175, cable for $59.99, and entertainment for $220. So determine her total monthly expenses. So again, we, would, we add up all of these expenses. This is how you budget in life, is that you think about all the money that you're spending per month, and you make sure that you have enough money to cover it. It is not my favorite part of a week or month, but life is a lot better if I actually do it. So we have $1,339.99 are your total of monthly expenses or Christmas. So just by adding those up. So part B, how much money does Kristen have at the end of each month? So she had her monthly income, let's go back and see, was $1,490.60. So $1,490.62 is how much she makes a month. Take away her expenses. Doesn't include, oh yes, groceries. I was like, doesn't include food. It does include food, that's good. It's good to include food in your so then we're going to subtract those to see how much she makes. Does she make enough money to cover how much she spends per month? So $150.63. So yes, she has enough money and she has an extra $150.63 per month. So if she wants to buy a car, we don't have time to go through this question, but you would then look to see these added expenses, how much more she would need, and then does she actually have enough money to do that? And if what could she cut down in order to be able to cost to afford a car? That's how you would do that question. All right, lesson number four, paying taxes. So as we mentioned before, income tax comes automatically off of your tax, your paycheck is one of the standard deductions. So it's a mandatory payment made to the government. The income generated from taxes is used to support the government and the programs and services it provides. So this is medical care in Canada. This is medical care, uh, 
education, our roads, our fire departments, our police departments, all of these things, as well as our government who makes decisions to, in theory, serve to our benefit. Um, so it pays into all of that. So to help complete your taxes, which you need to do every year, there are various forms that need to be completed to calculate the amount of income tax that should be paid both provincially and federally. So it's a, it's a bit of a process. So you need to know your T4s, which are the slips that are given from your employer that um, tell you what your, how much you earned from that calendar year from that employer. You may have more than one, depending on if you had more than one employer. Um, it also tells the amount of income tax, CPP and EI that you paid in that calendar year. And there also may be other deductions or other things um, that are on your T4. Then also there are T5 slips. These are issued from banks and other financial institutions. So it is the official record of any interest earned on investments or save money. And this is considered in income. So you need to declare it on your taxes. Again, you can have more than one T5 slip. So then when you're, when you're paying taxes, we have to talk about tax brackets because Canada uses a progressive graduated income tax system where your earnings are higher at tax rates in these tax brackets as your income increases. The more money you pay, no, so the more money you earn, the higher taxes you pay. So tax brackets determine the rate of tax paid for each doll additional dollar of income within the defined bracket or threshold. This is all really, really quick to go through. If this is confusing, go back to lesson four, go on back on YouTube to lesson four and see it broken down. It's much more, I give you laid out a lot clearer and slower. So if you have a lesser income, then you have pay less taxes. So for federal income, how it works is that on the first 15%, you sorry, you pay 15% on the first $50,197. Then on the next, on any income that you earn between $50,197 and $100,392, you pay 20.5% on that portion, on just that part. Then on the next bunch of money between $100,392 and $155,625, then you pay 26% on that portion. And that continues as you grow, as you go up, there's different pockets. Similarly, Ontario has a, uh, it also has different pockets and they are different amounts. So on the first amount, so the first $46,224, $26, sorry, you pay 5.05% if, um, you pay 9.15% on the 40s of the amount of money you earn between 46,226 and 92,654 dollars. And that again, it continues the pockets go up. So this is information that generally most of us don't know. I had, didn't know the exact amounts um, before creating this lesson. Uh, but this is just how it, our taxes work to understand it is, is useful. Okay, and then people pay both direct and indirect taxes. Direct taxes are taxes like property tax, HST, and income tax, like we just talked about. And indirect taxes are taxes that are included in the selling price of an item and are sometimes known as hidden taxes, things that we don't realize. So jewelry tax, so there's 10% of the wholesale price, the price that the store pays is included, is added onto your um, how much you're gonna pay. Cigarette tax. So in Ontario, there are three cigarette taxes, a provincial and two federal ones, um, included in the selling price of the cigarettes. This is in addition to HST. So you still pay HST as well as these other taxes. And gasoline tax. We don't pay HST on gasoline. It's already included in the selling price. But in 2022, how it currently is, is that there's a federal 10 cents per liter tax and provincial 14 cents per liter tax. Okay, so that's a lot. It's a lot. It happens in lesson four. Remember, it took us a, a lesson and a half to get through it. Okay, so number three, Marion works at Johnny's. Here is the T4 slip that Johnny gives her. How much money is Marion's income for the year? 
So we can see through, we can see that it's Johnny's, Marion. So here, up here is the employment income. So this is how much she actually makes, 12,500 and $34.39. It's hard to see. This is something that I need to update to make sure that it is legible. How much did she have deducted for the following? Income tax. So again, you need to look through here to see if you can figure out where it says income tax. So I think here it says income tax deducted. So $1,876.24. CPP is here, $386.29. EI is here, $456.12. Any charitable donations, yes, to the $100. And any RPP contributions, no, it's left blank, so that's zero. So Corey has an annual taxable income of $65, sorry, $65,270.20. Calculate the federal income tax, provincial income tax. So, I didn't put those charts there, so I don't have them memorized. Um, so we're going to skip this one um, just because I don't have the, the information that we need on here. I don't have it memorized. Um, go back to lesson four if you need to practice to do that. And then number seven, what is the amount of indirect tax that will be added to the sales of price for the following wholesale priced items? Remember, 10% is added. That one I do remember. So what we would do for this watch, we would do $125.75 times 10% to 0 0.10. So that's $12.58. So the selling price, how much you would see it at the door at the store, would be one hundred twenty-five dollars and seventy-five cents plus twelve dollars and fifty-eight cents. So that is a total of. $138.33. Not the same thing, it's the same idea. For gasoline, there are two gasoline taxes on each. So if it's $15, sorry, it's 15 liters. So the federal tax was 10 cents per liter. So that means we do 15 times 10 cents. And for the provincial, it was 14 cents per liter. So we do 15 times 14 cents. So for federal, we pay $1.50 in tax. And for provincial, $2.10 on top of the gas, or that's the part that we're paying towards taxes. Then, what percentage of each selling price is the 10 cents liter collected on by the federal government? So, yeah, we're not going to go into those right now. We're just going to keep going to make sure that we get everything done. All right. So then, lesson five: purchasing, making purchases. So this also is a really one really uh, packed lesson. Wish we did over a day and a half. So making change, if you work at a store, the cash register will calculate how much change you should give customers. However, it will not tell you what bills and coins to use in order to minimize the number of coins given. You need to figure that out yourself. Also, there are times when the customer may give you more than is required to reduce the number of coins they will receive as change. So it's really important to understand how to make change. Um, generally, we want fewer coins and bills. That's just we want to simplify our lives. So when we pay, we want to pay with as many coins from our pocket to get as rid of as many as we're carrying around. And when we receive, we want to get back and change the least number of coins in return. So that's one part of it. The second part is in this lesson was talking about sales tax. 
So there are two different types of sales tax in Canada. There's the provincial sales tax, so PST, which is levied by the, each individual provinces, different depending on the province. There's the goods and service tax, the GST, which is applies nationally, so every province deals with this to some degree. And then there's the harmonized sales tax, which is HST, which is a combination of PST and GST. So instead of having two parts, you just have one part. So it doesn't look like you're paying H or GST, but you're paying it within your HST. So first, there is no PST in three territories or in Alberta. So they only pay GST in those four places. In Ontario, Newfoundland and Labrador, Nova Scotia and New Brunswick, they all have HST. In Ontario, it's 13%. In the other three places, it's 15%. Then British Columbia has 7% PST, as well as the 5% GST. Saskatchewan and Manitoba also have 7%. Quebec is 7.5%, and Prince Edward Island is 10%. These I do not expect you to memorize. Ontario, knowing that it's 30% HST in Ontario, yes, I expect you to know that. But the other ones I don't expect you to memorize, you're welcome to look it up. So then when we're estimating a sales price, so when we're actually buying something, sometimes we, we're going to estimate it. We're not going to probably pull out our calculator, even though we have them on our phones. We're probably not going to do it. We're just going to sort of ballpark it. So when you're shopping, being able to estimate is really useful. So generally you round the price to make it a friendly number like we do all the time. And then you estimate your discount. If you are, if it's something with a sale, the discount happens before the taxes. So then you estimate your discount. Then you estimate your HST, which in Ontario is 13%. So we can do 10%, which is the friendly number, and about a third more um, to figure out what your HST is going to be approximately. So this is why those that grade activation that we do every lesson is helpful because it just gives us those these tools. Okay, so let's do a last few questions before we are out of time today. So number three on page 44. What change should be given when $200 is tendered for a purchase of $171.53? How many and which coins and bills should the cashier give back? So if, because this is cash, that's what we're talking about, really this is going to end up rounding, right? We don't have pennies anymore. So this is gonna be $171.55 is how much we actually are paying because we're paying in cash. So to figure out how much we need back, we're gonna subtract that from um, the $200. And I'm just gonna do it on calculator. We could do it manually, but I'm just doing it on calculator to save myself to rush through. So we need $20.45 is how much we need back. So that's the first part that you need to figure out is how much you need back. So, Which, what should we get back? So we're gonna get $28.45. So we're gonna have one $20 bill. So I'm gonna say $20 times one. And then to make $8, we're going to get a $5 bill times one. And then a toonie times one and the loony times one. So that's $20. 20 plus five is 25, plus two is 27, plus one is 28, great. And then to get 45 cents, we're going to get 25 cents times one, that's 25. And then, uh, then we're gonna get two dimes. So 10 cents times two gives us another 20 cents, which gives us 45 cents. So that's how many and which ones we would need of each of them. Number four, you have the following money available for each purchase. Hello, remember, ignoring pennies, your workbook is old. I need to update that as well. What would you offer to get back the fewest coins from each purchase? You buy lunch for $6.38. So that's going to round to, we're doing cash, so $6.40. So in order to get the least amount back, if we look here, I would say pay your, you would do your $5 plus $1, so you have a $5 bill at a loony, and then 40 cents, then I would pay, I would use your four dimes, you've got four dimes. So I would use all four dimes 
and then you don't get any change back and you just have a lot you know, five less coins and one less bill in your pocket so you buy a new cd for $24.29. So that's going to be $24.30 because we're doing cash. So what would you do to get the fewest coins back? So we're going to do our $20 because that's our biggest that so we need to do it. And then I want to do my $5 bill. That would be easiest. It would be easy. But if I just, if I can do my toonies, again, I can do exact change. So I have two toonies. So $2 plus $2 and then 30 cents. I have three dimes again, so I'm going to do my three dimes and then I don't get any change back, which is my favorite. I love exact change. It makes my partner annoyed because it takes a while to figure it out, but I love it. it makes me happy. All right, so then calculate the sales tax on each of the amounts given. So in Manitoba, remember our sales tax is 7% PST plus 5% GST. So we'd have to do 14.99 times 0 0.07 and 14.99 times 0 0.05. So calculate that. It's $15.06 is for one. I'll press the right button. Okay, so it's one dollar and five cents for PST, and it is seventy-five cents for GST. So then you add them all together to figure out the total amount. I'm not going to do that just for the sake of time. You do the same thing for other places. We're calculating the GST on these items. It's just 5%. If you're doing HST, assuming this is, I would assume that you're in Ontario. So you have to do it for 13%. Then here where you are calculating a discount. So we're gonna estimate, we're not gonna actually calculate this. So it's regularly $2,999.99. So that's $3,000, I'm gonna estimate. So a quarter, so the sale price is a quarter off of that. So half of 3,000 is 1,500 and half of that is 750. So we're taking away $750, it's taking a quarter off. So that's gonna be 2,250, I think. We estimate, and then you'd have to add HST onto that. Um, which we're running out of time, so we don't have time to do any of that. Okay, so that is a quick rush through of um, lesson, sorry, unit one. Um, as always, go back to all of our lessons on YouTube to find any of them. Reach out to me if you have any questions about any of them. I am here to help. You know the usual methods, phone, email, or Facebook, or how to get me. Thanks so much for joining me. Good luck with your review. Which.